So we had the SID Display Week here at the JDI. And uh, hi, so who are you? I'm Steve Rablick, Director of Sales for JDI. How are uh, you? And uh, this, these are some cool displays you have right here for the automotive market, right? Yes, they are. We're trying to show some center stack displays as well as cluster and console. So this is specially shaped? Uh, a little bit special in the sense that it's flat here in the top. goes to a J-curve here on the bottom. It's okay. actually shaped and as you can see on the sides as well. And, uh, um, and what's going on with up here? Well, let me show you something here that this display, for example, can answer a phone if you wished. Here's a gentleman. Yeah. And what's going on up here is if this was an autonomous vehicle, something like that, you know, we're sitting here enjoying the ride. Well, maybe you really want to have that display being over here. So we just go like that and try Whoa. to speak to the gentleman over there How instead. How do you do that? Do you just swipe it? I just swiped it. That's all. I'm going to end it. You know, we could do navigation typically on this display, something like that. We could also draw on this display. You know, we, remember, we're in a car that's driving itself. So this is for the self-driving car, imminent, imminent future of the self-driving car, Well, this car, is right? a concept for that, but let me bring it back a moment, too, because it's not really only for the self-driving car. I mean, we can do this kind of display. This is a typical application today in the automotive market. Uh, of course, you know, you answer your phone in the automotive market. The point here is that this is a display with our in-cell pixelized technology. There's no external touch panel, and it's also got local dimming, direct backlighting. So it's very black, and it's very responsive, and it's curved. These are curved, 800 millimeters to 1500 millimeter curvature. Three different displays sitting in one glass. And finally, we also have a mirror concept here as well, too. I this is know. also another one. Yeah, another one with the idea that uh, we really want to have a display for the mirror to be able to have a very nice panoramic image behind you. That looks awesome. And uh, so so this in-cell, uh, it's kind of like a dream of integrating the touch directly no, into No, the... I cannot say it's a dream. We're doing it right now. Actually, we're shipping automotive displays with in-cell touch capability into the market today. Because some smartphones have this, right? They, they've had it for about three years. We've started that uh, three to four years ago, in okay. fact. And nowadays, we're starting to ship the in-cell into this market. Is it a automotive. challenge to get the in-cell bigger and bigger? Uh, we. It's part of it. Typically, a touch panel would be in smaller in size. Getting it this large is a challenge. Getting it this responsive is a challenge. Nice. That's awesome. And you have some more de demos over here. Uh, let's check them out. So, so right here you have uh, another. What is this? This is uh, a pillar-to-pillar -pillar concept yeah. display with uh, four 12.3s bonded to one cover glass. They're all nicely bonded to one smooth curve 1500 millimeter curvature again it's a concept in the sense it could be pillar to pillar or perhaps you know if a vehicle manufacturer wanted to only have half of this in a vehicle but think about what would happen in a vehicle incorporating such a display like this i mean you would have to redesign the whole vehicle instead of having a center stack you'd have the whole system right here in front of you at your fingertips. And what would you see in it? Like augmented information about the street? Well, it's or? really up to the OEM what you want to put in there. Obviously this, if it was parked, you could do this panoramic view. You could make this be your speedometer. You could have this be your video maybe. Of course, in the States, you really can't show video. But it's really entirely up to whatever the automotive manufacturer might want to do with so much real estate and display. And if the regulators speed up the adoption of uh, self-driving cars, that would be amazing. Like for you, that would give you so much work. Well, that's very true. This may not be the end of it, though, if that happens, because these types of displays might get very much bigger or different in size and different in shape in a truly future autonomous vehicle. They could be, can you do rollable displays that just come in front of We can't of do it nowadays. I have to tell you that some of the display features you see for the future, you've got to keep in mind the automotive market is very, very robust and they, we must have reliable displays for the future. So it's not quite as simple as consumers might think. For automotive, you need to not be uh, uh, distracting the driver. True. You need to have a nice, uh, no, no, like uh, issues with the, uh, the, the, all the lights and the sun and everything. Right. We also reflecting badly on it. Or yeah, something. that's a lot of challenges in the automotive. It comes from the sun and high ambient lighting conditions for the displays, as well as the wide temperature ranges that exist for the automotive market. You know, we have to typically test down to minus 40 up to almost okay. boiling. So it's a very wide temperature range and it has to suffice for 10 or 15 years. And it has to be very accurate uh, the light uh, sensor, right? So you, you, you adjust the brightness? Well, maybe some of our tier one customers would do the adjustment of the brightness. It really does depend. If you open up a moon roof on this bright sunny day, you're going to typically wash out a display unless it has a lot of high brightness to it. And uh, here, this is the same we saw before? Yeah, that's the same one we had in the center stack. Just a little bit easier actually to work with here. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, also, um, 
so JDI is like the the the, the leader in Japanese displays, right? Well, you are the Japanese display. <laughs> We Japan were formed State. from Toshiba, Sony, and Hitachi back in 2012, April 1st. That was the merger of the three companies. Display Sony, business. Hitachi. Sony, Hitachi, and Toshiba. So it's yep. been six years that we've actually been in operation, and that's the combined technologies and manufacturing capabilities of the three companies. Uh, that not only exists in the automotive market for us, but all of our displays, smartphones, industrial, etc. Uh, but as far as the automotive market itself, it turns out that we have had strong position in it as both Toshiba and Sony and Hitachi as well, so that we do have the top share of the automotive market today in the world. And one of the biggest uh, things happening right now is uh, the accelerating rate of new ideas, innovation, and that's, oh, certainly. that makes the display market really interesting for you, right? Yeah, what's well, kind of interesting though, when you think about the vehicles that are in the field today, you know, if anything today was designed and conceptualized three years ago. So the automotive oh, yeah. market lead time is so long. So although we're seeing things like this being suggested today, it's going to take us a good three to four years maybe to actually see that in vehicles on the road. I can't, I can't try to imagine what's going on right now in the R&D for you, the next three years. You can imagine, but I can't tell you. <laughs> it's probably amazing, right? Yeah, it I mean, is. It is. It really is, uh, in the automotive uh, so, market. So maybe mm. I can check some of the other demos Certainly, please, here. yes. So, These uh, are the industrial lineup we have. This is Biff. So, hey, so, how you doing? So hi. Yeah, this is our industrial line of LCD products from small to large. And what we specialize in is we specialize in long life products. Our industrial customers require seven, 10, 12 years of support. And that's what we provide in these standard, these are, these are not customized, these are standard off the shelf products. Most all of them are very rugged in their design. For example, uh, this particular LCD is a thousand nits of brightness. It has a thousand to one on its contrast ratio. It has a very solid six mounting bosses in the back of it that are metallic and they are threaded. So once this is mounted into a very industrial and rugged requirement, uh, it's very stable in its mounting design. It's outdoor readable and its uh, life expectancy is at least 10 to 15 years. Uh, 10 these to 15 are, years. Yes, these and uh, all of these products are rugged in their architecture. The uh, temperature rating is minus 40 to plus 85, and uh, the shock and vibe specification is automotive rated. And these all come with a zero bright dot defect. We guarantee you zero what? A zero bright dot defect. We guarantee that these LCDs will not have a red dot stuck on, they won't have a green dot stuck on, and they will not have a bright dot uh, on their optical characteristics. So zero dead pixel. No, zero bright dot defect. Bright dot de we defect. We guarantee that there will be zero bright dots. And, and then in addition to that, we offer a standard P-cap with many of our LCDs. This has a P-cap and a cover glass. This is a 10.1 inch wide UXGA. It's 1920 by 1200 in resolution. It's IPS technology, and it's uh, 700, uh, 800 nits of brightness. And uh, this particular LCD uh, does have a standard PCAP available with it. There's no NRE uh, involved, and uh, and this is something that uh, we can sell with or without the touch panel. Many of our LCDs have a standard PCAP built into them. This is a brand new LCD. This is a 6.4 inch XGA. It's uh, its uh, resolution is 1024 by 768. And it uh, it's a very high bright LCD. This is 1400 nits of brightness right out of the box. It is also IPS technology. So it can be used in either the portrait or the landscape orientation. And what kind of product would use this? What kind of, uh, where would it go? Like in a, this, in is, a this is very popular. Trains and ships and Well, this airplanes. is actually, this is actually very popular in uh, avionics applications. Uh, and they use it in the, and they use it in the, the portrait mode in uh, avionics applications. And so this in airplanes? Helps, yes, sir, in airplanes. This is where it's very popular. And then this LCD is a seven inch full HD. It's uh, 1920 by 1080 in resolution. And this is very popular in broadcast cameras, much like the one you're using right now. Most of our customers enjoy uh, using this in broadcast applications. It is IPS. You can use it either portrait or landscape. 700 nits of brightness in a full industrial package. And this particular LCD, although it's full HD, it's gonna be around for a good five, seven, 10 years to come. We really 
we really focus on long life in our products. So it could be some of these products that are external displays for cam camera operators. Oh yes, sir. This is this is Very a bright uh, outdoor yeah. viewable. Yeah, that's. This one and the 10.1 wide UXGA are very popular in those applications. Great. So if you would like to upgrade your camera, we can make yeah. that happen for you. I definitely, that sounds awesome. <laughs> I'd like to have that. And then uh, right here, some, some more 8-inch. Yes, sir. This is, this is an 8-inch uh, high resolution in an industrial application. It's 1280 by 768. Uh, it is 900 nits of brightness. Very durable, uh, industrial grade. Uh, specification and then this is a brand new uh, LCD that's that we're offering in the industrial sector this is a 4k 2k very high resolution it's 3840 by 2160 uh, and this is one that we're introducing as a brand new product here to show this week. small bezel very small bezel and, and durable a very and, and we're building it in an industrial package now uh, this one is still in uh, the final stages of its development. All of the other ones I've shown you are in full production and, uh, and we're available to, uh, to work with new programs on all of these today. Nice. And you have some more display demos over here? I'm gonna bring you over around here. Yeah. All right, thanks a lot. You get it. Thank you. I'm gonna show you some of our new technologies that we're working on. So in this one is a highly transparent display that actually has a transmittance of 80%. We don't have a color filter on it. We do not have a polarizer. Strictly through the, the light is thrown through the glass and displayed in the image out to our eyes. No color filter, no polarizer. polarizer. Right, correct. So how does it work? It works with um, sequential RGB LED lighting and, and scattering dispersion of the um, light image through the panel out to our eyes. Uh, so does the effect seem to be uh, some kind of... Um, what, what could it be? What kind well, of application could this be? Again, I smart want to mirrors, maybe? I want to, smart, I want to speak uh, to you that, again, this is an R&D effort, so at the yeah. moment it's a small prototype in that sense, but what it could be, you may be able to take, for example, what is showing in the poster, you know, just sort of a display in front of something else. That's one thing that could be done. It could also be, if you're thinking about windows, you know, maybe you're in a car and you're looking through the car window, but you instead see your map of direction on the window or put that into a train or something like that. Something, again, even with the retail word world again, where you'd have some sort of product behind something you're trying to specify, oh, this one's on sale or something like that. Again, you could highlight with a display something that's behind it. Is possible you can make it much bigger? It's potentially possible. Potentially. It's very difficult you actually to actually to system to forward. drive somehow the thing. Potentially the, the issues in making it bigger come into play and in making a very uniform in the producibility of it. So it certainly is. And both sides is okay. Yeah. I mean, you can look from one side and the other, and it would be as bright and everything. Yeah, yeah. You can in the back side. But right. our, of course, uh, we, it is an R&D effort at this moment. Right. Yeah. Secondly, actually, it might be better to move over to this one first. Yeah. This is a 17-inch display, which is 8K. We've introduced this one before. This one, though, has a light field effect where you can, I'm hoping you're catching it. As you move from left to right, you're going to see different images come into play. Different sides of the same image. So is that is that uh, is that like a hologram? Kind of like it with the light field, yeah. Because we have so many images behind this display, you know, basically about 70, 69 whatever it is, and we're showing them. When you say seven, 69. 769? No, sixty-nine. Sixty-nine. We have various views of the same image, but this one is static. You see, we're just showing you static images in this one. If you move to your left, you see the same display oh. showing a movie. A real life movie. I'm walking around her. I think it's very hard for you to actually capture what's happening in that particular movie. But, but is, is, does that work with a one eye and two eyes? It's not a, it's not a well, stereoscopic. Well, you we don't have any glasses on. And it's yeah. all through the images that we're processing real time, 60 frames per second. Many, many, many images in real time that your eyes can see. It's the so first time we've shown something like that. The, the feeling is like you're walking around her, right? Yeah, isn't it? Didn't you feel that way? I mean, it was very natural and lifelike, wasn't it? And uh, so it's really hard to do? It's not something that you can have and commercialize very soon? No, or? no, at this no? moment, no. It's really just, a, again, an uh, R&D prototype working in the field application area with a lot of bandwidth and processing power. There's a lot of processing in there. A lot of processing. Cause very, you, very many. There's many, I don't many know if images. it's full HD, but it's like... Well, it's 8 8K. 8K per image. per image, and there's 68 of them. Yeah, 69. 69 times 8K. Right, at the same plus time. 60 times per second. That's a lot of processing. That's a lot of bandwidth. 
Right? right. Yeah. Maybe. No, no. I did maybe, wrong. maybe not that much. It's 169th of 8K. Ah. Uh, uh, 8K is the total. Ah, the total. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I made that. Before. Yeah, no problem. So, but I mean, it looks it looks really clear, anyways. Yeah. So, but uh, but thanks to the 8K, yeah, I have it you wrong. can have it yeah, uh, because of the yeah. 8K. We can divide it into multiple yeah. images. That's right. All right. Okay. And uh, what, what's on this one? Well, we have, as you've seen, the one display with the field system. This is a static image again of a real normal backlight on an 8K display, 17 inch. We had shown this, I think it was two years ago during SAB when it won Best in Show Award for this particular display. It's going to be used in the broadcast oh, industry oh. for 8K. But this one is a new version of it which we're working on to enhance the color. The BT 2020 color gamut, we achieved 97% of that color space. And there's a few different color bars that will come up, I think, right here. Maybe you can capture them yeah. both. When you capture them both, you can see how different the blue is, the red is, yellow, etc. Is it uh, using quantum dot? Or no, it's using uh, red, green, and blue lasers for backlighting. So, um, and uh, at this size, 8K is you broadcasting, you say, uh, so like the control room where they're going to do 8K? Right, right, broadcast. like a broadcast monitor, right. In the sense that, you know, the... 4K resolution for the Tokyo Olympics is coming towards 8K, and so they need a broadcast monitor. If it's not going to be this one, it'll be this one over here. It's one of the highest pixel densities, right? Right. In the world. Right. Put an 8K into a 17 inch. Very true. Nice. All right. Now, if I can move you around to another side. Yeah. These are some more products we really have. Here's something that we showed at a recent retail show. This is electronic shelf labeling. Oh, maybe we'll come over here for a moment. Yeah. Oh, keep moving yeah, around. Sorry. <laughs> Okay. Sorry about that. These are electronic shelf labels in this size here. So, is it e-ink? It's e-ink based. We have a collaboration with e-ink that we've announced in the past, and this is though to become one of our products. So right now, because of e-ink, you know, it's kind of a bi-stable product. It's very nice. low power consumption when it's in its fixed mode. It can be refreshed, as this will show you. In that, you know, if it was a sale event and you wanted to change your prices overnight, you could. Yeah. Do that or change them in the morning. Yes. This I think is it'd be just great refresh. If, um, if it, it refreshed the price for every customer coming in. I was thinking about the same thing, but what would you do if you wanted to give customer A a price and customer B a price, but they're looking at the same display? Yeah, that's the problem. Then, then, the, then you, you would have to follow the guy that is a, a frequent uh, shopper. Yeah. And you could follow him around and get the same prices. Right. Maybe. maybe that. Or maybe you yeah. could have a special say at 5, 5 p.m. You're not selling out your produce, your lettuce. Yeah. You could change the price of lettuce by 20% and go sell it out. It's a beautiful red and a beautiful yellow. It's like a very. Um, this is the type of e ink that has a very. Well, colorful you know, there's a very limited color, color right? spectrum typically with the e ink yeah. technology, but this with the red pop really, I think, would work in a great retail environment like this. Do you have many of them selling already? Well, we've just really introduced, I think it was a show in February, so it's just beginning. I understand from our industrial team there's quite a bit of interest. This could be quickly selling in the many millions, right? <laughs> it could be. Yeah. Very large. These uh, monitors here, we have a presence in the high-end medical market, and these are radiology market monitors. Uh, what we've done here differently is that we've introduced the low-temperature polysilicon yep. technology into these. I think you may know that low-temperature polysilicon gives us a potential to do high-density displays, also to make narrower borders. So that's one thing that the doctors and radiologists really had hoped for, is you know, when you can put these together side by side. And lower power, because, you know, these generate, you know, large size, there's a bit of heat, so anything with power savings is always good as well. So IPS Color Neo. and monochrome. Yes. What IPS Neo is, is a type of technology, IPS is in-plane switching, and we'd have introduced that years and years ago. But the IPS Neo, meaning new, we've introduced a while ago, it gives us very wide viewing angles, color uniformity that's all around the same. Maybe you can pick it up as you look at these. I know you're going coming back yeah. left and right. You don't really see any image shift, any color shift, any viewing angle changes. That's amazing. Yeah, that's our IPS Neo. So the, the doctors and surgeons are having a very nice time with your products. Well, it's true, but remember, keep in mind, this used to be film, and the radiologists are so, so careful because this is a person's life oh, at yeah? stake, potentially. 
and you can see all the details that are yes. required. There's, there's no issues. Right. You're right. not going to see something that's not there or something. Right. And that's a false positive that you don't want to have happen. Scare somebody that they may have a tumor? I mean, that's not good. Yeah. So it, it has to be just that way. When it's just a dead pixel. Oh, it, no. it's not. There's no dead no, pixel. Right. Okay. <laughs> there's no dead pixel. So, all right. Show you a little bit more in the front. Yeah. I want to bring you out to what we do for smartphone mobile applications. So how big is the JDI in the smartphone business? Oh, uh, very large. Uh, we are the largest LTPS color smartphone provider for displays. Because LTPS is the, the, the main standard for smartphones, right? Right, because of the high pixel density. It's over 500 pixels per inch typically. I wanted to point out to you what happened last year. We introduced the full active line. Last year we had a similar graphic and things, but at the time when we introduced it, yep. the concept being that we would have a very narrow border and almost no border where the driver is connected. Well, this driver is really not here, and it's a flex cable attached to the glass driver on the backside. So what we can then do is may really make the entire glass become the display. I want this phone so bad. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right? I mean, uh, uh, it, when, when people do these notches up here, I think they should, you, as you have a kind of like a curved corner, I think you could put the camera in the corner. Well, it's true. I mean, we could do more with the current corner if our customer wished yeah. that to be done. And it's true. This one is a little bit different from the other. It's got curved and cornered uh, notches in the corner. This one actually is in production. If you catch the left side, our customer oh, is Yami. That's the coolest one. Yeah, that yeah. Is, they use this one. We've seen this trend really happen in the market. As I said, it was introduced last year. And this wide aspect ratio, 18 yeah. by 9, has just popped into the They Chinese put the camera market. down here and you just flip the phone. But I think you could maybe even have it in the corner. Maybe. Yeah. We'll see. One other difference in these two displays. This one is also in production. Similar technology. Again, full active. But you'll pick this one up. It's 538 pixels. So it's a higher resolution. This one doesn't have the corner cut. But it could. You know, if so, so wished. Yeah. This is straight corners. Yeah, this is straight. Yeah, yeah. But I want are you there to any think... products with this yet? Or? Yes, definitely so. Both of these are. Oh, the HTC U11. Yes, right. Think about, though, if, you know, with English characters, we don't quite have the need for such high density displays as indeed the people in Japan do it, people in China do with their types of writing styles. I know that these would work very well, extremely crisp uh, kanji characters and such for Chinese market, Japanese market. Absolutely so. So many characters, you mean like in the keyboards or? No, no, I mean when you're trying to display something that's very fine in detail. You can see right here. You can see right here. I mean, you can even, oh, we just missed it. Yeah. You can see the numbers in those calendars. Yeah. They're fine for us. But think about then our colleagues in Asia who use you know, symbols and characters. They need this high density. It's amazing. Do you have one of those phones? I do not. Not no. yet, right? No, but uh, they're totally available. Uh, the, totally the, 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 the U11 and the Mi Mix 2. Yes. yes uh, so you're making the best full active. The well, we started it. Right? Yeah, we started it. We started the trend. Many people followed us. That's true. Right. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, here you have some more full active. Yeah, this is an idea if they were tiled together. I mean, again with the narrow borders. This is a conceptual idea. No phone that I know of is yeah. that. You can have a, a huge game uh, here. Uh, this is oh, this is the phone of the future right here. Zero bezel. Zero. It's totally arriving. Finally, I'd like to show you this as well, too. You, you know, with, uh, again, the smartphones being a very sensitive market to battery power consumption lifetime. Anytime we can reduce power in our displays is very beneficial yep. for our customers. So 15 hertz refresh rate would do that, but if very slow refresh rate, you're going to get uh, flicker. But you can actually maybe see with the camera. I'm not sure you're picking it up. Yep. But to counter that, we have to go through special technology, special uh, electronics as well as special uh, liquid crystal material and design in order to be able to counter that and be able to offer 15 hertz. And there you can see, I think, no image degradation. So you do variable uh, frame rates? Or what does it mean? We, the customer could do 15 or 60. Typically, they would tend to do something like 15 to be able to save that power. So you, you do 15 no when nothing happens? Yeah. And right. then you go up to 60 when there's a video or wanna, something well, on animation? No, it's really up to the customer. We're trying to show that 15 is able to be done with really no image degradation to save the power. Nice, even in the animations and everything. Sure.
So that means you, you'd be able to like uh, double the battery life, or what, do you, what is it going to do? Uh, well, not always that. I mean, there's a lot of other components in a smartphone that consume the power too. The backlight is a big The backlight's a large one. This is particularly so for the display panel itself. So there's still backlight power right. to be done. Yeah. And lastly, we're showing an OLED here. This is a prototype, a development product. We're not in production yet. OLED. That's what this yeah. one is, a plastic substrate OLED. Are you working with the IGZO? Uh, no, I cannot comment Not on yet. that this time. Maybe. I can't comment. All right, on that. but uh, so so right now you're the leader in LTPS, which Excellent. is the, the the standard. Yeah, we have low temperature polysilicon capability. We've had it for years and years, and as said JDI, Sony, and Tachi, all of us did. It's been I know my history is back about 20 years in low temperature polysilicon at least. We're definitely nice. the leader in LA. So it's been a great yes. show here. The SID. Oh, it's been a wonderful show, and I'm so glad you came by as well. This show has been Thanks. such a great thing for the industry. I know I've attended it now, I think it's my 30th year. 30th? Yes. Whoa. And it's been amazing. You know, I covered CRTs back in the day, and what do we have now? All these LCDs that do all this phenomenal work. And you, you even have more stuff uh, yeah, over here. Yeah, kind of crowded right now. We've got so many things. All right. Thanks a lot. So looking forward to the next year. Yeah. It's going to be in San Jose. Great. Okay.